I'm here with CFACT at the Youth Climate March in New York City. And we're going to go into the streets and ask these protesters, what do we have to do to solve climate change? The only way to stop this is through revolution. A protest is the beginning of that. That's where you find people who are sympathetic. Um, could that revolution theoretically require us to you know, start fighting back to get violent? Of course. I mean, if you look in the past uh, in terms of what happened with unions, I mean, how many people died just for the fucking, what now, 40-hour week? So we should do the same with the environment? Yeah, of course. I mean, fuck, if you're not willing to die for it to a degree, then you're basically already dead, aren't you? The world is going to look like shit in 10 years if no one does anything. So, I mean, I'm not just going to wait around like that, and I don't think most people want to. That the change that we need isn't just like everyone needs to change their lifestyles and their own habits. We need to restructure the economy. In fact, the Fortune 500 are so big and play such a fundamental role in the economy that they should be publicly owned, democratically administered. They should be run not for profit, but for human need. If we were to have a workers' government that did that, that would allow us to dramatically raise everyone's standard of living and also take the, the radical action that's needed to confront climate change. A growing interest in socialism, the growing radicalization among the youth about the climate issue needs to be channeled into a working class party. We're entering that kind of a period of turbulence and that was a period where Marxism, communism, socialism was a very strong trend among the working class. I think we're seeing the, the, the restoration of that kind of a movement among the youth as well.